So first, so this is September 21st meeting of the District Advisory Board for Amherst, pursuant of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting might do so in the following manner. Via Zoom on the webinar ID 824-1448-3355. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, and the public participation or in any public hearing conducted during this meeting shall be by remote means only. Um, so let me, do we have uh, three, six? Um, so let me find the agenda. I'm sorry, I need to apologize. My computer crashed, so I'm opening everything. Now is Mike able to come? Is that correct? Sue, do you know if Mike is able to come? I, he mentioned he was sick and stuff. But... He said he tried, but if he's okay, not no. here, that's the reason. Okay, we understand. Okay. So, um, so the first item in our agenda is public comment. And I know we have one attendee. And if our attendee would like to speak, they, she can raise her hand. Oh, there we yes. go. She, okay. I will allow to talk here. Okay. Hi, um, this is Lynn Griesmer. I'm president of the town council. And I've, I've been able to come to a couple of your meetings, but this is the first time I'm able to stay throughout. I just want to thank you for your time you're spending on this. This is an incredibly important issue for Amherst. And I know that it's maybe become a little more demanding than some of you thought it might be. Um, and it is demanding. And so we don't want to diminish that at all. And so I just want to thank you and urge you to continue on. Uh, I've been in touch with uh, Irene and we've talked about uh, when you'll come forward to the council and the fact that we actually then have to create an opportunity for public comment as well. So carry on with your meeting and thank you very much. Thank you. So Susan, be careful when, don't bump her out of the meeting. I'm removing permission to talk. There we go. Okay, there we go. Great, thank you. Um, so if we don't have any, Tracy, you're muted. I just, is Lynn's, is somebody's mic still open? Is Lynn's mic still open? That's what it sounds like, except that I put it back in as attendees and I hit, there she okay, goes. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was strange. Yeah. Uh, so we had one letter sent um, as public comment. It was sent and it's in the package. I don't know if you, everybody had the opportunity to read it. So it was incorporated into the package before the meeting. Um, okay. Oh, and we have somebody else who'd like to make public comment. Okay. Thank you. Letter in the room, yes? Yeah. Okay. 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 Am I unmuted? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, um, I'm certainly aware of all the work that you guys have been doing all summer while other people have been playing. Um, so thank you very much for your dedication to the town. I'm wondering now that the draft, um, the two drafts have come out, how much can the public um, comment and influence the outcome? Including making some changes or, you know, what yeah could you talk to me about the process from from here does somebody want to respond uh, down or um, do we... yeah i mean I, I can speak to that yeah. um we actually hadn't talked about a clear process in terms of um what our steps are we have a timeline in mind but we don't have an idea that what you've seen is 
what's going to happen. It's, it's not necessarily one of those two maps. We actually put them out there so that it would generate some feedback from the community. So we're very open to what you might wanna say. And, and I certainly can speak for myself. I'm certainly um, open to making changes. Um, so if there are particular areas um, that you think are, are mismapped, or if there's a, a philosophy or something that you would like to share, we'd really like to hear it. Tracy, okay. and then, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, no, I was gonna um, echo what Peggy was saying. I also know that I had reached out to people um, to share the draft maps like after they were public and including my council members and so on. And so we did get feedback. I mean, I would like us to establish as Peggy talked about, just establish a system for both receiving public comment, logging it um, and and then just like in terms of following up, like how we want to follow up with people. I mean, or do we want to choose as a committee, perhaps if we don't get a lot of public comments, like to follow up individually or something? I just just to keep track of them because I also think that that will be important information to share with the council when we give our report, right? That we did receive comments from the following number of people and so on. So, I think this is something that we can discuss part in the, the meeting later on. One thing that I want to make aware is that we don't have much flexibility sometimes when we are creating the precincts because we have to satisfy many constraints. Um, so um, there's constraints that are given by the census blocks and the population and geography. So sometimes we would like to have it something different, but we cannot always concentrate. My only question, Kitty, uh, to, is to Kitty actually, if, if she had particular comments that she wanted to make, I think similar to the comment we received from Jennifer Taub uh, in writing, that seems to be an excellent comment uh, that we can look to see if it can be incorporated. And if Kitty has comments that she is looking to incorpor have incorporated or other people do that they put it in writing and uh, forward it to the committee. Great, and then you, you will be discussing those comments I'm sure yeah. we will. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. If we don't have any other public comment, our next item is to approve the minutes. Um, so we have to approve the minutes of um, September 8th. I don't think we have the ones from last minute, but it's the ones from September <laughs> September 8th. Uh, they didn't make it to the package, but they were on the package before. We Last time we deferred the discussion because Joseph was not um, present. Um, so I know there were some comments and um, if somebody wants to take the lead. Uh, Peggy? Um, yeah, I had just two comments. Um, I'm, I, I don't have them. I don't have the minutes in front of me, but I wrote down where they are. Um, the first one is 2B.3. This is where we are talking about the cost of 15 precincts versus 10. Um, and I just... Um, the eight that I mean, we've since gotten much more information about that. So, so what's in the minutes is preliminary anyway. But it it didn't um, the cost did not include costs associated with the types of ballots, the mach uh, more machines, and so on. So there, it's just a little bit incorrect how it's written there. Um, the the eight thousand dollars that Sue had first put out was just for payroll, um, but it's also a little bit moot since we now have much better numbers from Sue. Um, so that was one point. And the other point is that um, in 3B.2, um, the, the change in districting is really mostly due to an increase in population near UMass and downtown, as well as decreases in areas of other, um, in other areas of town. 
Um, and it's complicated by the census block shifts, but it's not caused by the census block shifts. Yeah, if you want to, I mean, if we wanted to clarify that, right, that the main decreased population was in the Hampshire College area. So that's another shift, but. Yeah, but also some of the apartment complexes, which we think were undercounted, but no, of course. off campus students. Any other comments? The minutes? No, another comment? So somebody, do we have a motion to approve the meeting? Okay, mm -hmm. Merlin. I move we approve the minutes of uh, September 8th, 2021. Second. Um, Tracy Safian. So the, the vote is to approve the minutes. Yes, I approve. Marilyn Bastin. I approve. Craig Meadows. I approve. Peggy Shannon. I approve. Joseph Gordon. Uh, I approve pending the changes suggested. Thank you. Uh, for the clarification, Mahek Gilani? I approve as well. Irene Hovne approves of the motion uh, passes. Um, sorry, I need. I Do just want to give thanks to our minute takers for yes. preparing the minutes. Thank you. And I, I promise you'll have last ones, last week's minutes before next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, any announcements? I have one. Okay, so it's an email that just came in while everyone was talking. Um, it's from town council, and I know we were waiting on this, so I'm going to read it to you um, from Lauren Goldberg. She says she has researched the law relative to this question. The question was again: um, Are there any legal problems um, in us moving forward with ten precincts? And she said, in her opinion, based upon the number of residents listed in the census, the town does not need to increase its precincts slash districts. Therefore, if the 10 precincts meet the other requirements outlined below, then in my opinion, whether to submit a different map or create additional precincts would be a policy issue rather than a legal issue. And the law provides that the precincts must be, of course, we, all, we know all these compact and contiguous, all those things. Um, and finally, be reminded that the U.S. Census numbers are the only numbers that can be used for this purpose. And that's it. So we have our answer. Okay. So, um, few because if we had to start <coughs> working with fifteen at this moment, few. <laughs> <laughs> that's what about that timing was great? <laughs> <laughs> if not, we double shift until October thirteen. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Funny. Um, any other announcement? I think one announcement is Tracy, you got um Mike to print the maps in large format. Oh, um, Mike They're... had already agreed to do that. I think okay. based on comments that he had received, he just let me know that they were printed. So he did print large versions of the pre uh, the map one and the map two. And they are, they were printed out and I think they went to the town clerk's office earlier today. So Sue, are they up and available for the public now? Yes, they are. So the, so the public can see them, I guess, anytime the town hall is open. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Um, which is awesome. And I think Mike has been working really hard. I also understand that he prepared updated maps, um, which show more of the minor streets. I mean, I know that I know where all the streets are and we pro everybody here probably knows where all the streets are if you've looked at the maps enough, but I noticed particularly like on the PDF, if you zoom in, right, you, it still doesn't have any of the street names. And so I think you know, some members of the public were asking for that additional information and that really does clarify things and makes it a lot clearer. So again, I think Mike was working really hard on those. Sue and Tracy, where are the maps located and do we have to call ahead to go and see them what's the process no. they're right outside the town clerk's office on one of the bulletin boards on the left side of the window so and right they, in the hallway they say draft right 
I can't remember what they say. We put them up. He brought them up. We put them up. Okay. Uh, can you make sure? Can you see if it, they, they don't say draft with a pen? Right? <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yes, I will. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, sorry, related to that um, comment about draft. So um, based on the feedback that I had received from my council members and other members in my neighborhood, I did submit an updated map one to Mike for consideration and he did put it in the packet. Um, so in terms of if we're talking about like the large map one, if people agree that the new iteration of map one is is good, then you know that map one that's posted is already out of date. The one on okay, the wall. Okay, but at least it's gen as a general idea of No, absolutely. Yeah. Peggy. Um, and similarly, based on the some things that happened at our last meeting, the public comment from Meg Gage and some comments from various committee members, I also update. I'll also ask Mike to publish an updated map. Um, so that one, mine is also out of date. <laughs> so we, but we can talk about all that during the meeting. Okay. Um, yeah, Tracy. Um, and is there like an official announcement about us losing a member? Oh, yes, I forgot. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so Tammy Parks has resigned to the membership um, on, to the DAB. So that's why it's very, very important that we are all present. If somebody is not going to be present, please let us know because we might have to reschedule because we need quorum. If we don't have quorum, we cannot meet officially and uh, based on the material we need to prepare quite a bit of material before October 13th um, so we have only it's three more meetings and that's it but so we need to have everything done before October 13th okay so that's why it's very important the next meeting that uh, attendance and if somebody does cannot make it please let us know that we're going to have to scramble something. Uh, Marilyn? Uh, I don't know if this is an appropriate time to bring it up, but I did have a conversation with a, a town councilor who brought up the question as to whether we could have some districts with more than two precincts. So we could have, so on average, the, the district would be, you know, about eight, eight that well, whatever the number is, around eight thousand. But we could break it out so that there there would be no. three precincts. No, no, because any any uh, no precinct can this the variate between each other more than five percent. They have to be within five percent of each other. Okay, and that's based, on the, that's based on the state statute or whatever. Yes, state statute. Right. There, there, okay. there are some hard limits for the state. There's no more than 4,000 and no more variation of 5% between the precincts. Okay, that's Those what I are, thought. That's our hard stops for any map that is built. We, we okay. thought that at the beginning, at some point, we were throwing ideas, at, but it's, there's, that's a hard stop for the state. Okay. Any other announcement? Um, so if we don't have any other announcement. So real quick, and this yeah. is just um, a point of reference for the, I created bitlies for the maps that are now out of date. We might consider um, posting the maps as bitlies. And the reason being is that we can actually track how many times people are looking at those maps um, and kind of see maybe just through kind of crowdsourcing um, how useful it is for them to see this and how many times they're going to it for reference. But um, thus far the maps are tracking at 65 and 86 views since we posted them last week and those are the outdated maps. So just interesting bit of trivia. Thanks. I, I support that. Tracy? I just had a related comment to that um, in terms of updating of the maps. So even the original maps, the original draft one, map one and map two that went online 
like I know that Mike has updated those just in terms of their readability. So even though they still say map one and map two, version one, like they actually are improved for that. Okay. Okay, thank you. I, I'm confused. Does that mean they're not version one and version two? They're a different version? No, I mean, they're map one and map two. So the only thing he changed is he just changed the readability of it to make them more legible. Oh, okay. Is he, he didn't change any boundaries or anything. So oh. in the packet, I know that the updated map I requested is there and it's labeled map one version two. Okay. But map one version one and map two version one are still those versions. And those are the ones that are printed out large at town hall. They, I, ju I was just commenting just in terms of like, if you had talked to anybody and they said, oh, it's really hard to see the maps and so on, like that he had worked to make them more readable. So Sue, or is Mike here? No, he- Oh, doesn't. okay. He, he's um, been, Mike has been sick. Oh, well, he's, he's said enough, but I'm, I'm just curious as to, you know, online versions of these maps. Uh, does Town Hall track um, how many times folks go to these particular maps to view them or any other data like that. I just think it would be helpful and interesting to track. Um, and one way to do it is to have these within a, a Google Doc or a, um, I forgot what else is used, I use Google Docs, but um, you can put those documents as PDFs or as any other type of form uh, using a bit.ly. Does everyone know what a bit.ly is? So it's just a shortened web address and you can customize it. So like for this instance, I put um, DAB 2021 map one, DAB 2021 map two, which was very simple to create. So folks aren't having to cut and paste or type out a really long web address. And then, like I said, you're able to track it if that's helpful at all. But so that you don't know if the town tracks any of that info, Sue. No, that would be an IT question, but I think they probably do because I know um, way back when, when the website was first brought up, I remember them talking about being able to track the people that come onto the sites and where they go to see the interest of the pages, things like that. So I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Maybe it's something to ask Mike later. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I had a question um, in terms of people viewing the map at Town Hall. Like, I wonder if we could even have like a sign up there if people want to be added to like a list or something. And that would, might also give, I mean, I think your office too would sort of notice like if a lot of people are coming in to look at the maps or if nobody's coming in, but if we even had you know, a list. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess we probably wouldn't be spending such, we wouldn't be sending special messages just to the people on the list, but that would be, that would give us a way to at least register people who've stopped by if they were interested. So, or what about having just a simple uh, clipboard with you know, write your comments, you no, know, they could, be a, they could be yeah. anonymous. That's a great idea. You know, I yeah. so. I, I like I that idea a lot. As a public comment, leave the, that they can leave the public comment on the spot. Yeah. So if we could maybe make a form and people could just leave public comments there. That's a great idea, I think. Thank you. Uh, so our next item on the list is the packet materials accept the map. And there are several documents I would like that we talk about. Um, the first one is uh, the letter from Lynn Chris Meyer about the procedure for the vote so that we are all aware about the timeline. Um, we can discuss as the time gets closer, I guess, which option we would prefer to present at the meeting. But at, for me at this point, I think the important part is that by October 13th, we have to submit the whole package. Then we have a couple of days to to make a presentation, decide if the whole committee attends or only a group attends the meeting on October 18th. But I would like to, just in case, to pencil down um, October 18th um, to present, be able to present if you're interested or able. Tracy, you're muted. 
So I'm assuming for what goes to the council that we would also send them some write up about like how we made the choices we made. But yeah. that that wouldn't actually need to be voted on by the council that the only thing that would need to be voted on would be the map itself and that would go to the state. Yeah, is, but is to go to, to the state, we need to send uh, the description and everything and everything has to be there before the end of the month. So um, I would like to have as much as possible of the narrative at the same time, because no, we, need, we need to, at the end of the month, we need to send everything. Um, so even though for the so, so, I mean, I guess this might be a question for Mike and I know Mike has worked on this process in other communities. This is his first time doing it with Amherst, but if we, for example, were to send, um, like send just a list of like all of the census blocks with each of their precincts and districts, is that considered a description for their, for the state's purposes? The state on the email, so that's the another, uh, another of the items on the package. They say, they say what they want. I think they have also, they want also a narrative of the precinct and brief description, what are the borders and things like that. Okay. Um, so it's a, that's a, another of the emails that is on the- Yeah, on I the, thought there was sort of just an option that they mainly just need to know like which is where, but I understand. I think my, my read was that they wanted the list of uh, census blocks, which precincts and identifiers, and also a description, I think, of the borders of, of the precincts. That, that was, was my read too. Yeah, and that's what they did 10 years ago as well. Okay. Um, the other information on the package was, um, I think, Sue, you sent an email um, regarding, so this information, what would be the procedure if we are late or we don't manage to submit something, something in time? Or, the, or if it gets rejected, so they would have, we have one iteration. So if the state does not approve, we have one iteration that we can adjust based on the feedback that we get to the state. And after that, the state takes over. That's my understanding. Yeah, <clears throat> we have seven days that they reject it. Yeah, so, and I just got an email from Mike. He said he's just gonna be a few minutes late. So he is coming. Okay, great. Um, so that was, the, I think, the other piece of information to have in mind that hopefully it doesn't get rejected, but if it gets rejected, we're gonna have to quickly turn around and resubmit uh, a new draft. Anybody else has any comments based on the packet material? Um, the other piece of information, I think, that's something that I don't know if people had time to look at. Thank you, So I think you put the totals of voters for precincts. Um, and that's, I think, something that we should look at when we are creating the maps. And I think that there should be a discussion of what we do with this information, how we um, take this information and use it to make the districts afterwards. Tracy? Um, in terms of the number of voters, like, for example, you know, I noticed that precinct seven has a lot of voters. Um, I'm assuming that Sue's list doesn't differentiate between active voters and inactive voters. Is that correct, Sue? Oh, hold on. Let me look. I think it was all. I think I chose all. Right. Yeah, so I, think, I think it sure. might be to useful to show both act, active voters as well. Do you know what I mean? I so for why. example, well, okay. So one thing is, for example, I mean, just as somebody who's worked at elections, like I know that in areas where people move more frequently, which happens with apartment complexes, for example, that you can have more inactive voters, just unless if people have moved, like for example, college students, if they've moved out of state and they didn't re-register to vote anywhere else in the state, then they would be listed as inactive voters in our community for at least a few years unless they notified the town that they were now out of the town in the state, well, they, right? So, <clears throat> so like, throat> for example, when I bought my house, which I've now lived in 20 years, but like the old residents who used to live there before me, like they continue to be listed as voters at my as address for at least a few years, like after I bought my house because they hadn't registered anywhere else. Right. And so it hadn't there's, been transferred. There's a whole process for that and there's a, a few scenarios it's not just one way or another um so yeah that's possible that they can still be hanging on to the voter rolls for quite a while it's four years though two state elections um 
but if you don't include the inactives, because there will be some inactives that are just inactive. Because no, 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 I'm not saying not to include all voters, but perhaps to include both figures, just like for oh, a I more kind of realistic, so like to understand out. more about what, who are the voters who are voting. Um, and, and I, and relatedly, or who are the registered voters or how many registered voters are coming and I guess relatedly, perhaps like even sharing. <clears throat> and I think you may have prepared some of this for the Council previously but numbers on um, the voter turnout, for example, right. So like if you do have a if you do have a precinct that has, you know, a large number of voters, but then there's a very small turnout. Again, that could also be reflecting some of the inactive voter status. I can I can print new maps or new um, charts showing active voters, inactive voters, percent of voter turnout. That's all online. No, I realize that I know it varies. Yeah. Um, it varies by election. But now, haven't you? I thought that you may have prepared like a memo on that already for when they were looking at doing like the new districts. I mean, the new voting locations. Well, it depends on. There's so much information. No, I know. Interest. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It depends on which exact information you're looking for. I can dig it up, but um, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I can do I can do a reprint and repost of that um, number of registered voters, and I can do one active and one inactive, so you've got it broken down. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Oh yeah, I think that would be helpful. I I agree, Tracy. Give us a, a more realistic picture. Um, I just have a comment about Jennifer Taub's uh, letter that um, I, you know, definitely appreciate, again, trying to keep those interest areas uh, together. It's just that when we look at even a place like the historic district, it's not, you know, homogeneous, right? That if we, the streets that she's mentioning there, if we look across on Main and Gray, for instance, um, you have a business district, a business area across from that historic district, such as the Elements Hot Tub and I think it's Antonio's Pizza. And so you have that business area that isn't necessarily represented, you know, the same way potentially or with the same interest as the historic district. And so it's just a, you know, an example of how we kind of paint certain areas within this community with a broad brush because they have these um, these kind of legal structures uh, in, in place, but they aren't necessarily all the same and have the same type of interest. So it's just uh, an example of trying to keep that in mind. Thank you. So one for me, what was important to look at the the, the voting, um, the registered voters, is how, what's the discrepancies of between North and South Summers is it's humongous, um, a factor three in some precincts. Uh, and I think the decision that we're gonna have to make is how we take into this information on the district, because we could have with a district that has almost 6,000 registered voters and one district that has 1,600. Uh, so um, whether we want to try to balance high and low registration or, or, or not because in that case, uh, the ones that have lower turnout those get overwhelmed by the ones that have higher turnout. Have a, so that's, I think, the discussion we have to have when building the district, um, right? Um, because on one side, on one side, we end up having um, too many, too many people represented by just two representatives in in the council. On the other side, we might have, uh, we might end up overpowering certain communities because they have nowhere. Um, registration. So that's, a, I think that's the the back and forth that I'm having. Marilyn? I did a, a couple of scenarios. I, I looked at various combinations of um, precincts and districts, making sure that they were contigu contiguous and also looked at the voter records, you know, okay. the numbers of voters. And yes, there's, there's a lot of variation. So 
at the high end was 4,700 plus. Uh, at the low end, depending on how you cut it, it could be around 1,700 or 1,800. If um, depending on how we how we assign these, but yeah. there's, I think either way, because they have to be contiguous, I think we're going to get a lot of variation. Yeah. But the, even then, and it's, it's I always think, been like that. You know, yeah. it's always been that way. Well, that was when I, when I came up with this the crazy map that it was all finger not finger, but Snong was trying to break. It has always been like that because of the way we have the precincts and we we are doing small variations within the precincts and the high density of population that we have. Um, if we want to break that, we have to throw away everything through the window and start from scratch, maybe start from another point from the voting, from voter registration and start from that one, trying to have a more even balance there. But uh, it would be very hard. Um, but that means that I got a big break with current precincts and things like that. So. But even with, I think it's important to have this information and have it in, in the background when we are uh, creating the district. And what are the implications? Because we're gonna have to talk about that uh, when we're creating the district. Okay. Um, if there's no other comments regarding the material besides um, the maps, I think we should talk about the maps. And I don't know if everybody had time to see that Mike, the Mike sent an email saying that he had created more layers for the map where he put demographics, some demographics, um, and some demographics and also you put could put the layers on um, the versions of the map one and two that we had last week. I don't think he has put layers with the updated versions two of the, those two maps. Um, my, when I was playing with the demographics, what I saw is that both maps one and two did a pretty good job in general. There were a couple of places where some of the demographics were split. One particularly was Hampshire College area, but there was, I think there's very little, that we can do to try to incorporate, not to have islands of, of demographics that get um, embedded in others or have them more continuous. I think that, that was what I saw. I don't know if anybody else had any time playing with that information. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I did try to look at the demographics and that's actually why I made a new version of my map was to try to, um, I mean, I, it'd be easiest to look at the map. So when we, if we're actually gonna look at maps, we can do that, but I- Do you want to share? First, <laughs> I mean, yeah, other people I, may want to go first. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see, I can try opening the map, the version two, let me, I need to download it. Wait one second and I can share it or you want, you want to share it so that you can highlight it or? Um, it's, uh, Mike yeah. published it. It's in the um, packet now. It's one, two, three, four. It's the fifth yeah. one down, map two, version three. Oh, I did. So Peggy, maybe too, could you speak to how, I mean, I guess particularly when the, it comes up in the picture, but could you speak to the differences of that version of the map at the precinct level compared to your old one? I can, but I can. I, I think I'd rather start by just telling you why I sort of why I went to this map. Um, if if people are ready, I, I don't mean to just take over the map discussion here. <laughs> so. Yeah, let me see. I don't know how to display two maps. I'm trying. Let me sharing the screen. Mike is the um, the expert of showing. Two things at the same time. Can you see the map? Yes. Um, like that? Yeah, that's great. I cannot see the southern part. 
Yeah, you, yeah, that's it. Hampshire College is the boundary, so yeah, if, if you um, so we can all remember that. So the, this isn't very different from my other map. What's different is that the green area in the middle has been changed a little bit. But let me just tell you why I why I went for this, and then we can talk about it, or we could talk about um, the other maps. Um, there were I, I, I'm very I started by looking at the demographic data um, and the concentrations of black people and the concentrations of Latinx people and the concentrations of Asian people in town and trying to get a sense of whether, um, I, partly based on Dee's comment last time about being concerned that Colonial Village might not have, um, might be sort of alone. I, I can't remember quite the word she used in its district. Um, and what I noticed when I looked at the demographic data was that it felt to me like there were kind of, there were a few areas in town. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we weren't um, putting all the com communities of color in their own district. Cause that didn't feel like that. I, that felt like that might be disenfranchising to me. Um, so just in terms of thinking about districts, um, I thought, well, I, I'd like a district up in um, North, West Amherst. Um, I'd like a district where Colonial Village is not isolated. I'd like a district in which Village Park, which is in Precinct 2 in this map, is not isolated. Um, and I'd like a district where um, East Hadley Road is not isolated. And it's, that, it, I don't think that's possible to do all that. So this is what I landed on. So I landed on a you know district in North Am Northwest Amherst, a district coming down which is precincts two and six on this map, um, and a district which is precinct three combined with four. And let me ex which is the mostly UMass. And let me explain the next piece that I was trying to think of is that we have these residence halls which are very high density population, but very low density voters. Um, and that's tricky because we want to have, um, we want to have voters distributed evenly amongst the precincts or at least amongst the districts. Not so much, it doesn't really matter if they're, voted, they're even in the precincts, but it matters if they're even in the districts. So then I tried to draw the lines in such a way that the residence halls in town are distributed as evenly as possible into the five districts. Again, it's not entirely possible. So sort of using some of what I, Irena was doing with her map um, to, to try to distribute that and then just running the ratio so that there, you know, I just looked. Um, so the, Re just looking at residence halls again, and I know that lots of students and various folks live all over town, but, but the residence halls felt special to me because they're so concentrated and they generally are undergraduates. Um, and so they, they are less likely to be voters than a lot of um, other people in town. Um, anyway, that, that I managed to, to get the lowest number of resident hall residents in the combination of five and eight, that's at 1850. So that's almost 2000. Um, and the highest was in 910, which is the green and the tiny little 10, which is Southwest um, is 4,200. So yes, it's twice as much, but it's better than anything I could do with any of the other maps. Like when I tried to make precinct, when I tried to make districts with all the other maps, um, I ended up with a bigger disparity than this. Um, so there's that. And then the third thing that I tried to do was I was thinking about what Meg Gage said last week about trying to honor um, or at least think about mapping around village centers. Um, and that's why Northwest Amherst felt like that should be a district is because that's a village center. Um, and that's why the green, the district nine, which is the dark green in the middle, I've extended eastward so as to um, try to catch some of that, try to, instead of dividing the East Amherst Village Center right down the line and into two, you know, an East and a West, instead having more of a Village Center 
sense there. Um, anyway, so that's what that's where the that's was my thinking. Um, interested in comments. Oh, and one other thing I'd just like to say is that I remember um, Mandy Jo Haneke was saying that she thought Southwest should be reunited. And I would argue strongly against that um, because if we do that, then that, that is almost certainly gonna be a district, almost a whole district um, just in Southwest. And that is exactly what I think we want to avoid because, um, because then it would be very difficult to find somebody to run in that district and represent um, Amherst. So, okay. okay. Okay, we have a raise hands, Marilyn and then Tracy. With someone who lives in East Amherst, um, I live in Echo Hill. I sort of affil associate with the East Amherst you know, village center, and you have removed the East Amherst village center from my neighborhood. That's true. So just something to think about. It's, yeah. I mean, we've got a wedge, which is going of what's numbered four that's sort of heading east. And I don't know if people on um, Chestnut Street or Triangle Street consider themselves to be part of East Amherst. I, I, as I see it, the dividing line is closer to Belchertown Road. But I could be wrong. I mean, you know. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. And I don't know how that impacts what other manipulations you would have to make. Tracy. Um. Okay. So I live in West Amherst. I'm as a resident, a current resident of District Three, in Precinct Four, and I had shared um, the maps with a number of people in the district, including, as I said, our district three counselors. So one concern I have about the way that precinct four is drawn on this map is that it includes both some of the Southwest dorms, and then I believe it also includes the Commonwealth College dorms. Is yes. that correct? Like in yeah. precinct four. So as a precinct four resident, who is not somebody living in the dorms, it does, including both the Commonwealth College dorms and like a good, you know, 40% of Southwest in Precinct 4 means that the residents, the residents who aren't in dorms like are a much smaller segment of the population. So that was one reason why on the other map, like on map one, I intentionally split, I divided up precinct four and I put Commonwealth College dorms into a different um, precinct. I put, I merged Commonwealth College dorms like in with say precinct nine to the east. Cause that was, that's just a concern I have as a resident of precinct four. Um, and also with precinct four, just like to speak to the comment that Jennifer Tob had raised, as well as the district three counselors both raised, is that they were concerned that there is really quite a neighborhood um, in West Amherst, like along Lincoln and Sunset and so on, like the road leading up to the university. And this version of the map splits those up into where, where I think um, west of Sunset is in Precinct 4, but then east of Sunset is Precinct 5. Um, and, but, um, so I think, so one thing is with this map, so it's correct, right? So Southwest dorms, the precinct 10 is then merged in with the green one, right? Yeah. Okay. Into district four. I mean, I did, I have been thinking a lot about what D. Shabazz said about Colonial Village. And I do share your concerns about um, representation of BIPOC people and, you know, in terms of like having creating the potential for majority minority districts. Um, when she raised that question last week, I had also asked just about Rolling Green. You know, so Rolling Green is perhaps is not as racially diverse as Colonial Village, but Rolling Green is part of, um, is part of Precinct 6, and it is like a large low income housing complex. And so a part of me thinks it is more appropriate 
it's a little hard to see the demographics of Rolling Green because Rolling Green has a census block that also includes Echo Hill. So you can't actually, I mean, some of the ways that the census blocks are combined, like how they're large and I wish they were split and sometimes they're small. I mean, it's hard to say, okay, this section, these numbers are Rolling Green numbers and these are Echo Hill because we only have one census block that covers both. Um, and then also if you look about you know, some of the other areas where students are living in precinct six. So that was my concern at the time with um, if we put Colonial Village into a downtown district and we didn't have it like in precinct six, because then what happens to like this large affordable housing complex, which is probably the only, you know, it's the largest apartment complex in precinct six, do they feel like they have a voice too? Um, but can we go back, can we go back to the map? <laughs> I, I was trying but, to open the, the interactive or Mike, map. Mike is here. Maybe Mike can be our map guru. So can I can I answer some of those? Sure. Points? Yeah. So I think they're really good. Um, I, I, um, I also am concerned about the Jennifer Taubes thing. I didn't read that until after I drafted this map. Um, and I was worried, worried about the west side of sunset. So that, yes, granted, that is, um, that's a problem. In terms of the, the residence halls and in door or dorms, whatever, in precinct four, here's the problem. If you add up just the residence halls from UMass, Amherst College, and Hampshire, um, you get about 15,000 people. Um, and if you divide that by five, then you're getting 3,000 people on average per district. Now, if they happen to all be in precinct 10, um, which is almost, which is kind of true for my precinct 10, it doesn't really matter if that precinct is joined with another precinct that has mostly um, non-dorms. So that was the case for um, precinct four. I put precinct four with precinct seven. Um, and I did that partly because of your comment, Tracy, about always feeling a little uncomfortable that precinct seven would be with precinct eight, where precinct eight has such a high voter turnout. Um, and that, that lowers the, the voice of the people in precinct seven. So, so I'm not swayed by the having a lot of dorms in precinct four. I would be if it were just four, but being with uh, another precinct that doesn't have any residence halls to me lessens that. So D, okay. Tracy, and also I have a comment. Um, so I don't know, Mahek Jolani, are you and, there? And, you know, and, but that is an option. Hello. That's an option. D, you can see someone here in the background. Um, okay, that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to multitask here. Um, I'm, I'm asking if, uh, Mahek, have you, um, talk to any of the other students. I'm assuming that you're a student. I may be assuming totally wrong and my apologies if that is the case about how these precincts will um, work on campus and off campus in terms of the uh, where student housing is. Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for the question. So I did uh, discuss this recently. In fact, this has been a topic of discussion that's been going on. Um, however, whatever was discussed in the meeting is something that people are generally agreeing with. I don't think that there's any differences. Okay, thank you. I, I'm just interested in how the students would perceive that, that, you know, how would the students uh, perceive uh, the positioning of certain dorms in different districts um, and uh, off campus housing. Um, I think that one of the main reasons why the students wouldn't be too concerned about that is because our housing changes every single year. So um, students won't be living in the Southwest dorms for more than maybe one year or two, um, which might be the reason why they aren't, you know, super concerned about Southwest being split up. Uh, okay, thank to, you. Just to follow up, Joseph, I think you're also a student, right? Because yeah. Has raised yes. Um, I also can speak to that a little bit. Um, 
So I think one thing that wasn't, met, although Mahek made really good points, was the fact that um, the fact that students are constantly moving around so much, getting a voter registration for their residence hall. Um, you know, I, when I was a freshman and I was living in Southwest, I I was super involved in politics, so I wanted to get like my voter registration to my dorm hall immediately. But I know a lot of people vote at home not like in Amherst. I know a lot of people like aren't super to like going through the process of getting their voter registration changed because they know they're just gonna be moving in a short period of time. Um, so I think that like the voter turnout for that area, I think the population is large, but the turnout will probably continue to be pretty low. Thanks. Tracy. Actually, so I just wanted to speak quickly to, um, sorry, muted, but I'm not me. So I just wanted to speak quickly to Peggy's comment about uh, district uh, precinct seven and precinct eight. Like if we actually look at the numbers that Sue supplied um, about, I mean, as I said, I have been just generally concerned, you know, in terms of the diversity of precinct seven compared to the diversity of precinct eight and just making sure that seven does have a voice because to me, it does look like the main, um, you know, potential district for a minority majority vote. Um, is that, it, but if you actually look at the, what Sue mentioned at the meeting last week is that the precinct seven has some of the highest voter turnout and um, along with precinct eight, so they both do. So it was two, six, seven and eight, they all have high turnout. And so I am definitely less concerned about that than I was originally. And I, I think there is actually, I mean, there's, if you look at, you know, where candidates who are running for Amherst, there is like some good townwide and council candidates in precinct seven, and that's typically the case. Um, so I think there is like a certain amount of activism there that comes both from the, I mean, because there are so many people who live on East Hadley Road, but then also you have Orchard Valley and things too. So I feel like they are doing a pretty good job of keeping themselves represented in our town government. Oh, and I probably do need to go grab my kid, but I will call in and then I'll come back. Thanks. So I wanted to make a comment uh, as a president of North Amherst. Um, I think prison one um, does have, it's mainly student housing at this point. There is a many um, complexes um, that we have to be aware that, they, they, again, low voter turnout is all this area, it's not just that we have to look at the dorms, uh, but in along North Pleasant Street, there is a lot of student housing. Um, so that has an impact. I think when we are building the, the districts, we have to be aware of that. Um, that probably west of North Pleasant and even east of North Pleasant, is now almost a continuous of student housing um, over there. So we have to be, when building the prisons, if there is a, if also is joined by the dorms, the numbers actually increase considerable. Um, and that's why I think prisons one and three has very low um, registration voters. And that is an indication, I think, about the amount of uh, student housing. Um, but yeah, that, that me, is me as a no so much resident. Okay. Um, so how do we proceed now? I think we have to. Uh, I'm open to opinions of everybody. Craig and then Tracy. I'm, I'm wondering if we could take a look at, at Tracy's latest version also. And, okay. then, and then from, we, we need to, I think we need to pick one or the other to as a basis and then make what modifications. That yeah, we, or, or, we or, or, or I think, or maybe combine, there are some things that we might think that they're yes. good in one map and the other one and try based on also on the comments, see if we can do an iteration trying to incorporate 
the best of what we can see of the two maps and the comments and see if we can mash up all this information. That yeah, would I don't think we have enough time to do anything else at this point. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Mike, can you share the map or I share the PDF? Um, so do you want, do you guys want to see the interactive map or do you want to see the PDF? Because Peggy, you, I have two or three versions of maps for you and I have two for Tracy. So which, ver which versions are we going to look at side by side? <clears throat> I think the latest two versions of the map two, the version three of map two and version two of map one, right? Okay. All right. Or actually, could I, I could just speak to like what I changed on my map, like briefly, if that. He has it, so. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's fine. In the meantime, Craig, do you have a comment? My comment is to Mike that, that as new versions come out, whether they be from Peggy or Tracy, or that the old ones be put into an archive file instead of being kept active, because it just confuses people to, to see version one, two, three, version as it, if you got five versions which one do people refer to i think you need to archive the old ones and leave the latest ones up i think for the meeting we should still have them as a reference if we want to compare new versions and all and then put moving I'm, forward we only move forward the ones that are relevant but uh, for us when they're discussing i think it's good to have both versions so that we can go back and forth Yes, yes, so Craig, that, that's what I don't know, Craig. I don't know which, I don't know if map two version one is what we're going to be working on tonight or version two or, or version, I don't know which version is active. I, I don't know if all of these versions are active and are on the table to discuss. So that's why they're in the meeting packet because they're potential things that, to discuss tonight. The ones that we should be updated are the ones in the interactive map. After today, we come to a discussion in the interactive map, we should change it well and maybe we could even have a like in the packet we could have a folder of like archived old maps like not being used or something anymore but i do think for the meeting like for example i came up with a new version of the map and i didn't know how the members of the committee would feel about it right so i didn't immediately assume that my new map is like the go one and the other one is so i mean for our meetings at least I mean, I agree you don't want to be juggling too many maps, but at least like for the purpose of our meetings, I think it's good to have both so, versions. And then if we agree that the new version of my map is better than the old one, then we'll just archive the old one. You know, so, so. Mike, can you share this uh, side by side? Uh, yes, I'm getting it. Version. Yes, I'm I don't getting know it. how to do that. Thanks. I'm getting I'm getting it set up. Give me just a second. Thank <clears> you for joining us. Yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be late pretty much every Tuesday meeting. Just a heads up. I don't about 15 I, minutes late. I think <laughs> the rest of the meetings are at 6 p.m. Today was the only one that was a little bit earlier. <clears throat> OK. Okay, <clears throat> so do you folks see the map, two maps side by side? Yes. Yeah, so, so Peggy brought up an interesting point, you know, when we're thinking about the precincts and we're thinking about the districts. Um, so, you know, one question could be like how much do the individual precinct boundaries matter if the precincts are going to be grouped into districts, right? So like I explained how I was um, sensitive and I had concerns about the boundaries of precinct four, like on her map, but then if it's being matched like in a different way is, you know, what what is like the main concern just because we do elect our elected officials at the district level, not the precinct level. So, I mean, it's it's possible, right, that a future version of this committee could come up with other precincts. But of course, I mean, other districts, but of course, they'd also have to come up with other precincts because we're likely going to have to have 15 unless the state changes the law. 
So if, if I, anybody had comments. So do you, do you want to speak to what you changed on your map? Oh, sure. Okay. I can speak to what I changed. Um, so on my chain for on my map, again, I had shared my map with people in district three, including the counselors. Um, people were concerned about um, splitting up Lincoln and Sunset, um, which I do think is a neighborhood, just like some of the other neighborhoods that Mandy Joe had pointed out in her memos. Um, so I did reconnect, like I did take the Southern, I mean, some sections of that I had put into five um, or whatever the Brown district is five, um, the Olive district, and I put them back into precinct four. Um, and then I also just made a few tweaks around um, like with precinct three, because I was trying to make with the dorm, the, the Southern section there, I was trying to make it a little more contiguous and less. Um, so I grabbed a dorm a segment from the dorms there from the north dorms and I put it into precinct three and I removed another section I put it into precinct two. And um, so those are the main changes and then there's one thing I would still like to fix a little bit that the. Um, so if you look at precinct two now like if you go over towards whatever this is northeast street like that I took I put part of it yeah where Mike Bright is like so I put that and I had to move that because the numbers get so tight as I'm sure anybody who's tried to do this knows um so i ended up putting those into six there's actually very very few people here even though it's like a large segment i think there's a total of 80 people um yeah, that's a did, lot of a lot of conservation land here right yeah and, then, and so i did it just hard. to i did it to move the dorm and things and i know it looks a little odd right now um so i could play with that a little bit just to make it look a little better but but um but in terms of the actual numbers, there aren't too many changes. Oh, and I did um, reunite a little bit more of around um, um, North Amherst and Cushman, like because Cushman had been like split up quite a bit. Uh, so, so those are the main changes. I have a couple of comments about the map. So I'm looking at precinct three, and it looks um, that it's going to be if you look at the population, it's going to be mainly students. Well, and it's those neighborhoods right to the west of East Had East Pleasant Street. Yes, but if that's population wise, the, in the balance, I think those are 700 people only. Um, that this person is going to be overwhelmed. Um, well, it, and you also have um, not just the dorms, right? You also have the population that lives along North Pleasant Street. Yeah, I mean, but it's mm. it's uh, also you have all the the student housing uh, like uh, Hobart Lane and all this presidential Hobart Lane over here. So it's. Um, I think it, it's if it's all students, it doesn't matter if it's paired with a uh, precinct, which is not right. Well, by, the, by this geometry, so the only way would be to pair it with two, but then you have one and you would have here finger the one and um, so I, I would, nine. I mean, and, my suggestion would be to pair it with precincts with Peggy's map or my map to peg it with um, to pair precinct one and precinct three. Yeah, but precinct and one and one thing I did with with precinct one is I right I moved it more to the west. I'm sorry, to the east, like across, because there are also um, residential along there. Yeah. So precinct one again is all the west of North Pleasant Street is mainly on um, students. But I guess it's the question like, is, does it help to expand the geography of precinct one at all, like including to the east to, in terms of pulling in? I mean, if we're including like, so now precinct one includes the area around Cushman and things too. So is that expanding the population of potential, you know, people who would, could be involved in government and so on? I think so. It's all the area around Cushman. So the, 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 the area around East Pleasant Street and Pine Street, all this area is pretty much linked to Cushman. So, um, 
there are kind of two village centers, I would say in this area, you can consider two centers. One is Cushman and the other one is North Amherst. Um, right, okay. And so those uh, are both in precinct one, no? Cushman is not, uh, okay, precinct one, yes. Yeah, I moved it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the neighborhood. Yeah. So, I mean, I was trying to expand. I mean, I know that you, right? So, um, Sue had said that precinct one and three had some of the lowest sort of turnout. So, I mean, how else would you think that we could, you know, expand or change those districts to make it more? Yeah, there's not many uh, other way because then, um, you could exp I don't know if precinct one could extend a little bit more, catch a little bit more. You, that's the only one that has a little bit of wiggle room. You could transfer some of precinct two that it's above. It's one point seven above the median. So I'm sorry. Can you show like um, where you would move precinct two? So I leave it on the north. Um, right. Uh, maybe one slide more. So. Be, has to balance out. So precinct two right now has um, is one point seven seven above the percentages. Mm, right. Okay. Right. So you could make bring it a little bit lower, either with the, the next lever. I don't know what. I don't remember if there's another um, weird shape. Oh, but precinct so, two is full though. Precinct one is full. So you would be moving, you would be moving population from precinct one to population precinct two. Is that what you were talking about? No, I'm saying so from precinct two to precinct one, and have it uh, both be more balanced. So instead of one, 1 1.77 above, bring it lower. How? I don't know if there's any census block that has 20 people, 30 people. Yeah, that's uh, really hard. I mean, the, the only census blocks that are like that are usually around Cushman. <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, yeah, so. yeah, bring one of the other ones if it can be brought the next to So the, I think at this moment, these are the numbers to try to get it as close as possible. This map, the conversation that we have to have is that forces Precinct 10, there are only two possible configurations with precinct 10, yes. either with four or with nine. Right? Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I played with trying to make my the connect precinct 10 with precinct five the way Peggy had done it. And because I did like some of that. Um, but so if you look at actually in those, if, if you look at them, the on my map on the purple section to the east of precinct 10 so just like directly like due east that that is all students too like that's going to be where the new student dorm goes um the one on mass ave in lincoln yeah. and those neighborhoods i mean those housing is almost like dorms it's like super high density dorms um there aren't I don't know if there's like almost any owner occupancy. And, but um, have, have they started construction? Because for example, on, on North Pleasant Street, they started construction already right. for the other dorm. For the students. Well, those aren't going to be dorms. Those are going to be, you. Um, so North Village is closed and it's going to be developed um, privately. They're both, it's going to be dorms, uh, family housing and dorms. It's all private though. I don't think it counts as dorms. I don't know. It's. I think it's a partnership. It's not all private. Uh, it's. It's a partnership within the university. The university. It's a private, the state partnership. It's uh, by student housing and dorms. Uh, the same, both. Um. So if we were, to, I don't know. If people have opinions of the two maps. Um. I think they're very similar except when we come down to the center of the map that we have um, different ways of joining the maps. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I guess if people had any comments like for their neighborhoods, right? So I know when I sent it out to District 3, I got a lot of comments about how people feel about District 3. Um, I, I told you about the person. Yeah, no, I mean, if Peggy? Maryland or Craig or anybody has comments or. Yeah. Um, I, there's a lot of things I like about Tracy's map and I'm, I'm really thinking about you know, Amanda's comments about North Amherst. Um, and how to how to address that, but I want to know what would the districts look like for Tracy's map because right. to me that's in the end so, that's what's really uh, critical is whether if people are going to be represented it's by the districts. So where does um, ten so, go? Yeah, I mean I had looked at a bunch of different options um, mm -hmm. for my mm -hmm. districts, and so I will say I mean. As a member, as a resident of District Three, um, I do feel comfortable with um, District Three continuing to be District Four and Ten, and um, the council members for District Three feel comfortable with it continuing to be District Four and Ten. I mean, they do mention the, how, you know, how it is problematic a little bit, and I think the students on the call Mick and Joseph spoke to that just about with the dorms that it's really hard to reach people in the dorms and. There isn't good dorm voter turnout in local elections and things and like all those kind of issues. But I mean, that's the way that precinct currently is. And I mean, the district currently is, and they didn't have any issues or questions with that. But so, so one of the versions I did keep one and three together, as you did. Um, the ones that and I and I did, you know, I did keep seven and eight together. Um, because as I said, like I have much reduced concerns about precinct seven. I mean, there were a few options in trying to link like precinct seven with precinct five, but then, I mean, it, there's just all, so many pairs that work or don't work. Um, so, I mean, a few options with, so if you have precinct two, like precinct two could be matched with either precinct nine or it could be matched with precinct six it's currently matched with precinct six in our current districts um and then you also have the so i mean so one option could be to match precinct two with precinct nine and then to match precinct five with precinct six and so that would actually speak to some of the issues that have been raised about precinct six and isolating it um you know, isolating colonial village and so on. So if it was grouped that way, then you are pulling in both the parts of downtown, like into the district that would also include colonial village and Bowling Green and things. And on the corner of, um, I guess it's Main Street and Southeast North, Northeast Street. So that's like that village there, but right to the South West of that, um, that's affordable housing there too. Um, so, so I was I trying to connect some of those. And then Marlene. Um, so just a couple of comments. Well, we have, we, um, if two is paired with, is not paired with six, then we are, we are isolating Village Park. So that's just, you know, another something to think about, but, um, but, what I, oh, what I wanted to say is that the, the having a lot of students in your district really cuts both ways because with a lot, a lot of students, then it means that it may be harder to find candidates to run. But on the other hand, if there are a lot of students and they're not voting, it means your vote counts more. So the districts like seven and eight, um, where there's really high voter turnout, um, if we put them together, it means that their, their votes don't count as much as in a district where there are a lot, a lot of students. Um, so- Like uh, current Senate. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So it's a re it really cuts both ways. And I just yeah. think we need to, to recognize the fact that it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a lot of students. Actually, I was trying to put a lot of students in the districts with um, communities that have traditionally felt more marginalized so that their vote would count more. So, okay. So. Marilyn? Yeah, I'm looking at 
MAP 2 version 3 and MAP 1 version 2. So for precinct 1, both of them have the same population, but the, the, the lines, the precinct lines are very different. So in Peggy's version, it looks like it's cut off at, um, it looks like East Leverett Road is part of, um, I guess what's probably precinct six. So, so one thing not, Peggy did, one, not one, precinct thing, one. one thing Peggy did in her map with her numbers is that it includes like one census block with a dorm. And I'm talking about, I'm start. talking about one. I mean, no. if you just look at precinct one. There's, no, what I'm saying that's how that's how the numbers balance. Like, even though our maps look different, is because hers includes one dorm. They're right where Mike's. So, Marilyn, they, they have a couple of differences. So, if you look at the corner of Pine Street and Northeast uh, North Pleasant Street, yeah, there's one block there. But in the yeah. numbers, the big difference is the dorm that Mike was highlighting with his red cursor. Okay, can you do that again, please? It's right. It's right here. Oh, okay. So, it so was a, that has it a was ton a, of people. So that's the balance between drawing this shape all the way up East Leverett Road and drawing this shape to include that one little block. And okay, the so, other one on, on North Pleasant and Pine. Yes, that one is And right that, that's only about corner. 40 or 50 people. <clears throat> okay, so my other concern is that that district or that precinct, precinct, I guess it's six, is very, I mean, if you look at the dimensions, it's it's probably the long, longest north to south. And um, I'm just, you know, in terms of neighborhoods, I think that we're, we're discussing neighborhoods that are somewhat different. I, I don't know how many people would have in, on East Leverett Road would consider themselves similar, you know, the, the, I think they might identify more with the North Amherst area rather than something that's really heading into, you know, that's East Amherst and to some extent South Amherst. That's all. It just seems to be too, the, the distance between North and South seems to be too great. So how does that, I guess the question, because you live in that area, like how does it work with the current district, right? So like if two is continued to be matched with six, how, how does that work as a district for the people who live in district two? I can't really speak to district two, but it seems that it's, sure. it's I guess, I well, think, no, just, I think the major, okay. yeah, um, that seems to work. I think the major issue, I think the precinct six is that east of North, uh, Northeast Street and uh, North, of uh, Route Nine, eh, not Route Nine, um, Pelham Road. There's very little population. Well, it's it's like a mountain. <laughs> well, it's a <laughs> farm. Uh, it's a, there. There is some. Uh, there is some housing along Pelham Road, right. and a couple of houses on on North East Street. But the big chunk is uh, either conservation or farms. Um, so. Um, I'm looking more, you know, heading north of like Shootsbury Road, that yeah. area, Flat Hill, East Leverett yeah. Road. Yeah. You know, it's it's large. Mm -hmm. So from well, that point of view, you area -wise. think Tracy's map would make. So I I have a question, Tracy. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sure. um, the pricing two and six in yours um pricing uh person two is very full it's not that it can i was wondering if we could move the border towards north pleasant street but they won't i mean be precinct there. six it's smaller right it's just yeah. i don't but there's only like huge chunks to <laughs> to, to attach it with oops i lost my screen Oh. Hang on a second. Like, for example, I mean, you could, if you wanted more population in Precinct 6, right, you could go south of Belchertown Road or something. Um, but then that just makes the geography of Precinct, um, Precinct 6 longer. 
and I mean, there is still the question about the districts about, I mean, I think that's part of why I was looking at, does it make sense to group precinct two with precinct nine and to group five and six together and not have that district go all the way up to North Amherst? Peggy, you had a comment. Well, yeah, I wanted to ask Marilyn. So, so looking at Tracy's map, I, I hear what you're saying about the precinct, I, I can't remember, is it six, I guess? Yeah. Which is your neighborhood. Does it feel more comfortable to you to be paired with precinct two, as you essentially are now, which is the bright green, mm -hmm. or would it be more comfortable to be paired with, I think the dark green is what the other option that Tracy suggested. Because it's, again, the precinct itself, it doesn't matter for representation. No, that's it's, true, but then for redistricting, so then the, our rep, our you know, again, this would be in two or three years, but our district reps would I mean their the geographic area they represent would be different. And um, isn't part of the, the guideline that you want to, as best as possible, retain the current district lines, or am I, I incorrect? I, I don't think that that's a, I don't think anybody's said we have to do that. There's obvious reasons to do that because you know less disruption and and confusion for the voters and and what happens when we elect our our representatives this fall and then we change the districts like who are they you know who are they representing next year but I but I really feel like as Irena said our whole kind of government has changed and so holding on to what was created a couple of years ago really may not make sense. But we are used to a district government right now, and we, we know who our, our, lo our district reps are. So as, as, you, as you brought up, when it comes time for the next election, they would, I guess, their affiliate, if so if they run for re-election, their district would change based on their residents. An example of two and, and you know six right now. They would, so, they would. So in that case, you should like my map. <laughs> because... Mar Mar Marlene, I think there has been only one. So the districts were created how long ago? Three years ago. Yeah. Right. With mm -hmm. based on the precincts that they were created some years ago, that when there was a different kind of government and the work, they could not rework precincts and they were working with the precincts. Right. Uh, and it was a different type of government. With each government, they work on districts and they chose these districts in the same way they could have chosen other districts. This has been only, it's going to be maybe two election cycles. I, I don't feel, maybe I'm too, I don't feel committed that um, we have to stick to the districts considering there has been so many changes in population shifts. So we have, it's, it's not that we have had maybe 50 people changing one place to another. We have had 1500 go up in one place, 700 drop in another place. So based on that, then we have to rebalance and make sure that the districts are balanced to best represent um, the people in the same way that uh, the states, I think there are some states that lost one representative or gained one representative at the national level, they, the representatives have to start changing and campaigning at the state level. So everything, everywhere is gonna be happening, happening at this level. Uh, it's, I, not that I, very, it's not that we have very, it's not that we have very little changes. I think we have such big fluctuations in numbers, the way things work that um, we have to adapt, I think. Yes. So I understand that. And, you know, I know things will have to change around the edges. The question is to how, how drastic do we want to make that, you know, reconfiguring districts, you know, do you want, do we, is our goal to try to retain them except around the edges or is our goal to reconfigure the entire town? Tracy. I mean, so both Peggy's map and my map like have some um, changing of the districts, right? 
Mm -hmm. It's just about, and at the time that the Charter Commission picked these configurations, I mean, there were some other possibilities that also had some support. It's just a majority, a small majority of the Charter Commission members, like chose the configuration that we have today with the districts. Um, and I guess the question is like, do how well, you know, since the districts have only been in place um, in our form of government for three years, like how well do the current districts work Right. I mean, this has been a learning process and, you know, if people are concerned, for example, about, um, you know, like, for example, it was brought up about districts, one, that those districts don't get good turnout and things like, how can you, how can we adjust them? Like, as we get more used to this form of government, I mean, we can, we can continue to look at the current districts and I think that that would be as an option. And I think that that would be something useful to take to the council. But then we could also have like one or two alternatives that also think about how we could potentially change them. And just, okay. and it's really important, I think, to get the people's feedback. So, I mean, I haven't talked to everybody in District 3, but the people I have talked to, they said they like District 3 the way it is. So, and I guess the question is, do the people in District 2 like District 2 the way it is? So, and I'm, I'm not sure if we also yeah. want to poll the, the town councilors to of see, course, yeah. you know, how they feel about it. I, I mean, the council are the ones who have to approve the map too. So mm -hmm. I think that totally makes sense to get feedback from the councilors as well. I have a question. Do we have to give special preference to the council or it has to be everybody? I think um, the councilors have a vested interest. Um, yeah. But I think uh, the whole population of Amherst have, should have the same saying, not just the councilors. The yeah, councilors. I mean, well, I reached out to my counselors just because they also they each have mailing lists and things too. And I said, could you please share this information with your mailing lists and things to try to get more feedback from the people in the district? Uh, what I heard from South Amherst is they were concerned about the Peggy, what you were saying, the fact that um, large voter turnout and low few representatives with a larger voter turnout. So the fact that the vote doesn't count the same from some people I heard was that. Uh, I, I agree that it works both ways, but I think that's uh, some other concerns that, that were brought up. Yeah, speaking of a resident of you know South Amherst, I, I'm not crazy about the idea of having the two most um, highest voter turnout <laughs> districts uh, precincts together because I just feel like I'm underrepresented. Mm -hmm. and, and thinking about, for example, if we put 10 and four together on Tracy's map, um, that's like, how many students is that? That's a huge, because you have, you have entire Southwest plus that little block of just to the east uh, of 10. That map has fewer. Um, that map has fewer students than in your district because it doesn't include Commonwealth College dorms. So um, ten is ten is the but, same on both of our maps, unless you right, right, right. Yeah. But when, but combining those two together, um, like ten. Oh, in my map, I put ten with. Oh, a, if if we were to ten. use your districts with my map, yeah, that would. So <laughs> anyway, all of which is to say that it just does does it, um, as a resident of South Amherst, I'm a little concerned about putting seven and eight together. Or on my map three, um, I guess it's also seven and eight, yeah. But then I, if, you, if you don't put seven and eight, you need to put seven either with five. Yeah, you would have to put four. seven with five. And then I guess the question is, would you want six and eight to be together? And then like six, that, six and eight together is huge. <laughs> Yeah, it's also not good. I know. I mean, that's really, I mean, that's what I was wondering before is if you think that there's like a lot of lower density areas, but no. like going all the way from East Amherst all the way through like all of South Amherst is a giant, giant area. Well, and what if you put together for your map, you put um, four and seven together and five and eight together. Also, right, so the issue is with the Commonwealth College dorms is you could put 10 with nine, like 10, like 10 can only connect with nine or four. Right. And right. I mean, and then you have Southwest in the dorms and that I think you we would, 
you're not covering a lot of town. You could cover, like you are covering some, you're including um, the neighborhoods near um, Wildwood School and you're including the neighborhoods near Triangle Street, like near the school. But it's a pretty small, that would be a very small geography um, in terms of where student, people are actually living because Precinct 9 includes, my Precinct 9 includes Wildwood School, the middle school and the high school. Mm -hmm and the dorms right so in terms of like how many how much space people are actually living on it's not very large Tracy careful with the language I'm <laughs> uh, the dorms people live in the dorms no no I mean just in terms I'm of joking. In terms, no I understand I yeah I agree um so we can go always go back to my map that was completely right together. I'm tempted actually. Tempted. I, like, I, I would change the southern part for your it map. It was very um, innovative. Right, I'm kind of, it changes. I'm kind of so the, the the, my map, part. what it mainly did it was changing all the southern part into three north south districts, the precincts. Those were uh, aligned, they were splitting. It was splitting eight six, eight, and seven together with five into north, south precinct. I mean, I, I appreciated how innovative it was. It's just like, I think that having, we, we having a map, I mean, Peggy's map has, you know, 80% of the precincts the same and mine has 80% the same. And it just, yeah. it might be too radical to get through the council in three weeks. So that was that was one well, of the issues. As long as it can be justified with the issue about voter representation, that that would be a way of. So so I mean, one question, right? So on Peggy's on the map two, is so one thing with map two is that it includes it has dorms in six of the precincts because it doesn't include that section in that southern part like that goes as my kid highlighted earlier that goes down to that one census block of the what? dorm and Tracy. that in the current i mean i don't know if it's a big difference but in the current sue had mentioned that like precinct one currently doesn't have dorms but it essentially so. does have dorms that are not official no, dorms. right that could be too yeah it's it's of no. precinct one essentially you have all the complexes that essentially is not, as you say, private dorms, it's right. It's true. Um, so mm. that one has dorms. Um, and even precinct three also has because it has several of the complexes with high density of students. So I think whatever you have. Um, so I think in these maps, I think the one that the precincts they don't have dorms, but they still uh, is five. Uh, no, it's a uh, nine. No, eight. That's the first eight, word. Eight has Hampshire College. That's it. Yeah, but Hampshire College at this point, the amount of students that they have is oh, the same amount no. as one. Uh, <laughs> it, it's one of the yes. buildings on prison one. One of the complexes there has the same amount of students. One as Hampshire College at this mm -hmm. point. Um, yeah. So just noticing the time. Yeah. So oh, wait. we Let's can go, Craig. Craig, you have a comment also? So Peggy and then Craig. Well, I, I, I think we had some comments early on in the discussion tonight from our student members who indicated because the students are, as, as it was pointed out a couple of minutes ago, are very transient and don't typically stay any one place for more than a year. The, our, our constant discussion about the student dorms and that it is become somewhat irrelevant because they, they're not gonna vote by and large. And so consequently, what we need to do is, is a, a, as we've discussed, is pair them up with, with precincts that are going to vote to make a district. And, uh, and yes, the precincts that are going to vote are going to be the dominant feature there, unquestionably. But uh, that's life in Amherst, and it's becoming more so over time. Uh, 
particularly with the new dormitories in the center of town now. Um, and it's gonna be interesting 10 years from now to try and figure out where people are voting. But at the moment, um, I think we've got to look to those precincts that actually vote and pair them up with the non-voting ones. Um, and if we're going to pick a, a map to start working from and maybe make adjustments, my sense is that Peggy's map uh, version three is the easier one to make minor adjustments to to, to get what we need. That's just my opinion. Anybody? Craig, I agree. The, I think my comments are about the students is actually about the voter turnout and about the number of um, for representatives that people that will run and run for government. That's the the issue. That, that we don't want them. We don't want persons on districts that are going to be eighty percent or seventy percent students as much as possible, so that we try to ensure that there is going to be. Um, representation in the council, town council. The, the districts are going to be um, represented and the districts are going to be represented by people who vote. Yeah, and but you need to have enough people that, that they have a pool of people that are willing to run for office. Right. Right. So if you have very few registered voters, um, you're going to have even less people running for office. Um, so that's why that's the, the major issue. Tracy? Uh, so one of the things is that in terms of getting public input, I mean, it sounds like we've had each had, you know, some people talk to us about the, um, the current um, draft configurations, but our press release only went out on Friday, right? And the maps only went out to the public in terms of like public being able to access them from town hall today and so i mean i'm not trying to delay a decision about which map we take um but it, but i was wondering if it is possible at this stage just as um to wait another week and to, to decide a dominant map to take and maybe you know i can look i can think about how to change my map or if peggy wanted could change hers a little but just just to get more feedback because we're only, you know, one group here, right? We only have the members on this committee and like we have the whole town of Amherst. And so, um, and even to hear from counselors and from people in the different precincts and districts about, you know, what people are thinking and which map might more represent, would work better for them, right? I mean, and really, so we could just use the time to sort of explore the two options, but then also just to hear from the public and then maybe make a decision next week. Thank you. I also feel like it, this, is the, this is the time to try to get input from the public. And it may be, you know, I, we've, we're going ahead with these two maps. They're, they're actually quite similar as, as people have, noted, and that makes me a little uncomfortable. I wish we were sort of putting out a couple of maps that were really different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I, I, I've, I've sort of regretting. <laughs> and and I'm like, well, we put up a third map or something. I don't know, it just feels like now is the time when really getting some sense from, Amher from Amherst residents, not just the, the people in this room, um, is what we need. Um, is it, you know, a, and then, so I would agree that we wait for a week before we decide on one to go further with, and, and we actually have that time, right? Because we need to have something to present to the council on the 13th, and we want to have written something by then. We can start writing um, before we even have the very final version of the map. So I say we, we do as much as we can to try to get some feedback. Um, and people should feel, I think, feel free to keep tweaking. You know, I'll tweak mine, Tracy can tweak hers and, and everybody else can tweak anything. You know, put, oh, and, and maybe, Mike. I don't know, Matt, yeah, Mike just yeah, pulled up this map. Me. I mean, should we show this map too as like an alternative scenario? I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little, 
I'm a little concerned that the state will object to Irena's map because of the shape of the precincts. Um, but I love that it looks really different. And so, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, yeah, Irina, didn't uh, didn't we include your map as it a map that we sent to the state? It was a different version of this one. It was a right, different version. But... It was a narrower for precinct five. So this is B. So it wasn't. It had a narrower portion at the center. Okay. okay. And they had raised a question about that one because it was a living narrower. So I created using the zeros around. I created mm -hmm. a wider one. Mm -hmm. And my, I did it as a, again as an exercise of um, completely different and trying to create. Um, we could justify it, I think, by afterwards creating the districts, showing that the districts actually afterwards would not be uh, right. So fingerly that you could create the configuration. Right. Um, so Marilyn and then Peggy. So. I think if we're if we do retain these, I think we also should. I know Peggy's map has a district configuration, but there probably are a couple of different combinations. So should we also add the various district combinations that are possible? Because I think you know, if we're thinking about districts, people probably would want to know well, what district would I be in, and to re and just another thing to react to. Yeah. I, I think we should, everybody can work on different identities and configurations. I don't know if we want to create the, like, we split the work among all of us and a couple of people work on different maps, trying to come with different configurations so we don't all work on the same. Um, Peggy? Um, I just, I just want to, it's maybe reiterating what Marilyn said, but I think the important piece here is the districts. So when we put out a map um, with precincts, I think we just need to emphasize to the public and to the counselors and to anybody else we talk to that, that really looking at this, you need to think about which, what the, pre, what the districts would look like. How are you going to pair the precincts um, and have it work out? Because, because uh, in the end, that's what, counts. Tracy? So, um, I mean, so I had a few different district, potential district configurations for the map that I had drawn. And, and I mean, I'm happy to add like a district level to my map. I mean, I do think that it is important with any of the maps we put out for people to also think about alternative configurations that could be on the same map in terms of the precincts, right? So, I mean, that's one reason I didn't look at the districts yet, because like, for example, with South Amherst, I really wanted to hear from more South Amherst people about particularly like in um, what their thinking was, like, is it important? I mean, I raised this question with a couple people from South Amherst I met with and it seemed like way too kind of datish and wonkyish for them and they weren't really thinking about it. And they just think this is where I vote, this is what I'm focused on and stuff. And, but I mean, just to, you know, ask them like how, you know, if we change it, if we keep it the same, like, what does it mean? What do you think is more important? And so that was why I didn't put um, precinct, I mean, districts on my map yet though, I could do that if that's something that we think is really important. I was just kind of keeping it internally about what I thought the configurations might be. And there's only a few I think that would work. Mm -hmm. So is there a way um, if we create, uh, thinking about process, if we create now based on these two maps and I can play if, if you guys let me play with mine about districts just to, as a radical version um, that how we create a folder with all the maps that is clear for people to access. Because we, if we, if on each version we have a two or three versions of districts, we're gonna have we, uh, we're gonna have four, six, nine maps uh, for people to look at. What do you think about like multiple page PDFs? So it would be like map one. 
map one and then there would be like three pages for the three different district scenarios. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's I just like an that. idea. Okay, that's a, that's so, a great so, so, idea. So, yeah. yeah. So that would keep okay. it one PDF in the in the in the attachment, but there'd be multiple pages for the different. And and people would realize that right, it's the same map with like a different district. Okay, and maybe on the title to put um, possible district configuration. And maybe we could label them like A, B, and C or something. Sure. Yep. No, that I like that okay. idea a lot, and that would give people something to respond to too, to see it visually. And then instead of calling map two version three, put put the date maybe. It's in so the that, bottom, but yeah. So I would label them so that it's okay. So these are the maps on 921 or, mm -hmm. and then um, so that chronologically we can know when they're created and it's, it's easier to identify. So and Mike, before you came, like there was a request to make sure that the, when the maps are printed, I mean, I guess there's a question for the committee about how many maps we would wanna have printed out like large scale where people can look at them. Like it's important to have the maps with the districts printed at large scale. I think it's more important to print with the precinct at this point because we haven't decided any of the districts. Okay. okay. I think the precincts, um, people, I think, would be worried about borders and then we can look at the combinations mm. right? because I don't Makes think we sense. can print. Yeah. I don't know how everybody feels. But anyway, the it. comment, Mike, was just to make sure it says very clearly draft. So unlike any other maps at Town Hall, that they're not official. Yeah. OK. Like even a watermark. I don't know if it's a watermark. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Um, so, go ahead. Oh, so I just had another comment. I mean, we had talked about it at the beginning of the meeting, just about how do we want to um, catalog and you know, keep track of public comments that we do receive, like as a committee, you know, if people are sending in emails or if we have anybody come to our meetings, like, do we want to have some kind of master document that has the comments that we receive? And also, you know, or if a member of the public writes, for example, and they don't attend our meeting, so we can't, you know, we're not responding to them in person, is that, would like the chair follow up or how would we handle that just to make sure one both to to be able to tell the council how many people we've heard from but then also um just to keep track ourselves i i, I don't know how other committees do i would prefer if anybody receives any public comment to upload it that it's not going to be here to i've been send it so that it's published on the package as i don't know if we can make a subdirectory that is public comment um so that uh. we can find in one place on the if anybody gets an email to forward it so that it gets uh, added as public comment within the packet so it's part of the material that we discuss in the meeting um I can do that. As some committees, what they do, they start scrolling the text at the beginning of the meeting, and I never find that um, very easy to follow. Um, I don't know what's the feeling of everybody else. I mean, maybe we could put them at the at the meeting where they're discussed, and then also just as we've done with some of the other materials, like that we would be accessing them across meetings just to have like a public comment folder or something just to have a second copy so somebody could just see wh where you receive public comment. Mike? Um, so I just, I know we're getting close to the end. So I just kind of want to think about, um, <laughs> so I, I spent time last week loading maps into the interactive map. And then I think people worked with them a little bit, but then, you know, late, into the in the weekend, early weekend, early week this week, you know, I got an update from Peggy and an update from Tracy. So the, the the layers that I loaded in last week are kind of they're out of date already. They aren't even working maps that I think we're going to be working towards. So my question for everybody is, should I take these two maps right here and load them into the interactive map, or should I wait until are are you folks are Peggy or Tracy? Are you going to maybe reconfigure a little? few things here and there and I should wait for those revisions before loading things in or I, what do you think on my end I would I would look at it again today but I I don't 
I would wait until like tomorrow or something. I, okay. I can give you something tomorrow if I have any changes. I don't see myself making many changes. Okay. Like maybe just a few blocks or something. So. And likewise, I don't think I'm going to be making any changes in the next day or two. So you could um, feel free to load this one in and I right. will not send you something on Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> at, at like 12, no, it was Tuesday, mor it was Tuesday morning at 12.53 a.m. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> um, and I apologize. I think you're a saint, Mike, and I really appreciate it. Oh, um, Mike is a saint, yeah. Yeah. Um, what you're so, doing for us. So. Well, what, what I think is important is, you know, to take this data and to throw it in the interactive map. And I took, I don't know if you guys talked about it, but I took the precinct boundaries on the map and I loaded them in as the colors that you see here as the interactive map. But I also threw them in just as an outline of what your precinct, so that you mm -hmm. could turn on the demographic layers mm -hmm. and start to see like, oh, hey, our, uh, what were you going to say? I did that. Yeah. Um, I play with are, that. So, are we I'm, are we looking at a, you know splitting up a group of people here or there? Um, I mean, the layers I ended up using were the outline layers. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know I, if we need to put in the whole layer too. Yeah. I. Yeah, I used the outline layers and the demographic. Um, okay. Then yeah, that makes it even easier. That I can just I'll just put the outlines up. Okay. So I think the the for um, the next item of the agenda is timeline and next steps. And we've been talking about that. So again, timeline October thirteenth. We need to submit everything. Um, I'm gonna keep repeating, and um, so that gives us two and a half meetings, maybe. So we, next meeting, we definitely need to have. I think an agreement um, by the end of next meeting, my vision would be that we need to have more or less an agreement and start drafting uh, the material to submit. And even if there's gonna be some changes, I would hope that to have volunteers to start putting together the information so that we can start working on that. Uh, just one second. Um, I think that was it. Um, but we need more input from people. And this, uh, okay, Tracy, you want to make a comment? Oh, my comment was just about the report. Um, is, it, is now a good time to speak to that? Yeah. Okay, so just as Peggy had mentioned, I feel like, I mean, if, if you know, if anybody wanted to volunteer that we could start working on the report now. Um, if you look at the format of the old report, I think we could use a lot of the same language. I mean, Yes, we haven't decided the exact precincts, but we know, you know, we know what demographic changes, what population changes have ha occurred in Amherst. You know, we could also write up, I wrote up an email to somebody and I explained why we didn't do 15 districts, I mean, 15 precincts, I mean, why we did 10. I mean, so, you know, we could have some of that language like that and we have the opinion of legal and so on. And so I feel like a lot of the document you know, it's almost ready to be written now, except for like this decision about exactly what the boundaries are. So I am hearing volunteering. I, uh, I am not volunteering, but I do have sections that I've been like sending explanations to people that I'd be happy to contribute. I'd be happy to read it. I'm on to, I'm on another committee now and the town committee and I'm writing memos for them as well. So I prefer not to write this one, but I can help with it, of course. And it, it doesn't have to be very long. I think it's like five pages or something, the other report. I, I most certainly will volunteer to help, not this week. Um, <laughs> I'm way behind on a lot of things this week, but starting next week, I will. So, so so I have a suggestion. I, I, this week and next week, I'm uh, up to, uh, here. Um, so Tracy, can you put together whatever information you have in one document? Um, because I think it's easier to start working if you compile whatever information you have. And um, so, so if you have the, the decision from council also forwarded, to, that we start compiling all the information that we have and we have been discussing in one place. 
Um, in one document, I don't know if it should be a Google Doc because of open meeting. Though, yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's works. the question is, um, um, I mean, if we can scan in the old doc, the old report, um, the 2011 report, right, that, I mean, that that's almost a template for us. And then we just can update some of the pieces. I think we already have it in the packet at the beginning. We I mean, it is seven. a PDF and so on. I mean, if somebody, I guess the I'll, question is I'll, in terms of. I'll convert how it for we, you, Tracy. Yeah, I mean, that, well, that's not a big deal, but I guess also the extent, like with open meeting law and stuff, the extent to which we're like posting, like if something was going to go in the packet with a bunch of different narrative, is that appropriate to put in our packet or, I mean, it's all sort of a draft thing. <laughs> so, do you know, like, I mean, as you said, it, it's mainly would be like a Google Doc or something where people are like interactively working with it. I'm not sure that it's ready. Oh, oh no, what I'm saying is Sharing instead with the of commit. everybody could have whatever information or in separate document and then compile the documents together. I think that that would work with open meeting. I mean, maybe yes, we so create a folder and we call it, you know, material for report or something and then if, people if I have a piece of narrative, I could put it in there or something like that. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, you can forward. This is how we did it with the ranked choice. We forwarded it all through. Um, if you remember, Peggy, we forwarded everything to Tanya and uh, the chair. Right. I mean, okay. we, we sent a, a draft could go out to everybody via email. The comments could only go back to right. Tanya, no, not right. to, to the chair. No, right. of course, um, yeah. OK. Okay. So we could do it that way, but so any, so anybody could send pieces out to everybody. You just can't comment on it until either sure. either comments go to Irena or they go. You bring them to the meeting. Okay, I would prefer if we bring them to the meeting because yeah. this I cannot uh, this week or, or if there's any other volunteer oh. that wants to compile the information because I cannot this week. I I'm, I'm scared I'm gonna lose the comments. So, so I think, uh, Sue, maybe one thing is if we create a folder, you know, that's like materials for a report or something, we could start mm -hmm. to populate that and it could just be pieces. And then right. then when we get to comp uh, write the report, it's going to be easy because there's going to be already pieces written over there. So, Thank I you. mean, if anybody had time, for example, to go through the 2011 report. And, and to make an outline and to just sort of out you know to highlight what we need to change or something if anybody wants to take that on that would be awesome right yeah muted yeah muted i could do that as long as i had a word document to you know I mean, okay. if I had a Word document of the last, of the final report of the committee, I could, um, I could do that, I think. Do we know if that exists or we have to convert yeah, it? No, so thing? Mike said he would take the PDF and he would give it to us back in Word form. Thank you. Did I really say that? Did you not? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm, like kidding I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Maps. No, we'll we'll stop telling you to make new maps all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank I just want to. Can I jump in for a sec? Yeah. Um, so I'm making a folder for public comments. I'm a subfolder under um, just under all the meetings, like we have for reference materials, and then I'm going to make a folder for materials for um, for our report. Now. I can post things to that. I mean, if people want to, you want that up online, so you'll have to send it through me. Um, to, okay. That's fine to town clerk. I can do that. And I'm going to add the uh, town council's decision as well. I'll add that up, put okay. that in the materials for reference. Right. Okay. And and the public comment can it be by date, if of by the week, so that we read. So if somebody sends between today. And next meeting, it should go for with the date of next meeting, I'm thinking. But I, okay. I guess I sure. was thinking, can we, yeah, I guess if the files each have the date on them, that would be helpful. But then for our meeting packets, if we could have the new public comments in the meeting packet, but then also copy to the public comment package. So we just, we would have a record of like where they all are. 
sort of like what you've been yeah. doing now, right, Sue? Like you've right. you've uploaded some to the reference and some to the yeah. Okay. So two Thank places. You. Yep. Thank you. So we have a timeline. So on the items not anticipated uh, before, I wanted to bring um, something that was mentioned uh, for publicity. Maybe we could have Amherst Media to broadcast this meeting uh, to link it. Um, so the link is in the chat. Um, and then let me see about trying uh, to We are linking here in Zoom. Um, yeah, I just turned it off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Multitasking. Can we ask Amherst Media? So I think you're the person to ask. Can we ask Amherst Media to broadcast this meeting and how the committee would feel like broadcasting this? So it's up to it, you all as the committee, and then you all would have to send um, a request. Um, yeah. And um, there's different ways of doing that uh, for Amherst Media to broadcast, because you're not talking about a live broadcast, you're talking about a recorded broadcast. So um, they can make it available on their YouTube channel, which is often accessed just like the town's YouTube or the town's you know, website. Um, request and uh, come to yeah and understanding with them would government channel um, so that would give uh, more outreach to the community potentially but yeah a letter would have to come from you all and probably the town manager Marlene I'm just thinking you know since People can watch, you know, they, they can watch our meetings live. They can go to the recordings on the town website. Is that, is it redundant? And do we think we're going to get more viewers going through ACTV? Unless we use ACTV to publicize our meetings and directed people to the Zoom links from the town. So Marilyn, both. So we could, um, use the press release uh, you could create a very short slide that uh, would uh, work in rotation on Amherst Media um, asking for public input many organizations do this both uh, you know school district and uh, other community organizations and uh, it would have the information to send in uh public input and where to go mm -hmm. okay use that service which uh amherst media uh has the other is that yes if it's in rotation in terms of programming content it does get more views because there are people um particularly people who are involved with uh, uh town government and engaged with those issues, they watch Amherst Media um, during the day. So those are two different ways of doing it. Of course, they can access it uh, through Town Hall, but there is still quite a few people that go to Amherst Media out of habit or out of um, not having access as, as, as much as we you know privileged folks think of you know we're online and we're we're using our computers everyone in this town not all residents have that capability or utilize that capability and so turning on their television and having government shows uh their um rotation does help for them to engage on some level. So it's totally up to you all, but it would be a con media. I was thinking. Does that answer your question, yeah, Sidene? I was thinking that it, that it would be accessed by a computer, but as you indicated, 
it will be part of the rotation so people can just turn their television on and we'll be able to see it. So that makes some sense. Just I mean, I think if that's a way that... Yeah, and I... Yeah. If some people access it that way, that helps get the word out. So. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. I would, and then, I, would I mean, and D, you had mentioned too about the bit.ly link. So, you know, if there are going to be new maps created, I don't know if you... Would it make sense for you to create the bit.ly links and then you'd be tracking all of them or should we each do them on our own and it's just kind of fun to me to track oh, information no, sure. like that but it's I anyone mean, anyone I mean, could make the bit.ly links I mean, mike know, but, could make the bit.ly links okay, but so the point is the point is um marilyn just to to complete what uh you had uh, uh asked about if there is someone that wants to create let's say a graphic um, representing your group um, with contact information. I think it would be to your advantage in terms of um, soliciting input from the community and uh, have in rotation on Amherst Media's. Uh, and what happens is that both the people who are tuning into one of the three channels, it's in rotation. Then it is available on the website. So they can go to the streaming part of Amherst Media on the website. So it's, it would be useful. Free advertising, so to speak. We, we consider it a service to the public. I wish we had done it before. Um. Well, it's not too late because it, it, you could just create a graphic. It doesn't have to be fancy. They will actually help you. Um, again, that's why Amherst Media is the awesome Amherst Media. They will actually help you create that graphic to make sure it's the right JPEG size to show properly on the television. So it would just take one of you, you know, I could help, but I would need the information that you want posted. We could go from the press release and start there. Uh, but we're talking about, like when I say a, a, a graphic, something like how you would create in PowerPoint, let's say, or a slide. Yeah, I think if it's going to be in rotation, it has to be very sparse on information because you want people to be able to read it and grab them right uh, now what would be the procedure to get this you mentioned a letter from us and the town manager is there any particular wording that we have or just requesting that the yeah, finding out uh, is it finding out if it's at all possible to uh, have these rebroadcast uh, on Amherst Media on the government channel. I think it would be appropriate to come from you, Irene, and yeah. uh, Sue. Uh, you know, as as a request. Okay. I mean, the thing is, we're contracted. Amherst Media is contracted. Uh, every 10 years with the town and they're contracted to deliver a certain number of hours of government shows and um, we always do much more than we're contracted to do so um, you know but it it's always helpful you know to treat them kindly and uh, make a, a, a formal request okay so I can work on an email to send, um, and I, we have to figure out how to get uh, the town manager um, also on the email, and maybe the, I can work with you in creating a slide, and there's somebody else wants to create a slide. Maybe Tracy, you want to work with me on a slide? All it is is like taking the stuff off the. Um, off the the last press release which has the contact information uh we would uh you know this committee would like input as we try to uh look at the next districting maps whatever you want to say but something you know two or three lines that fit on a slide contact info this is where you could submit input that's it yeah, i can work with you on that yeah. Like I, Thank you. So, I mean, to the question, the reason I brought up the bit.ly links thing is just to the question of, you know, if the meeting materials are in the packets, 
right? And people click on the packet. They're Absolutely. We're not tracking them through the bitlies. We're, we're just tracking them. I mean, I don't know, Mike, if the town tracks linkage, like who clicks on what, or how many people click on different materials, Sue. Sue, Mike, do you guys know? Um, I don't know off the uh, top of my I, head. I don't know. So I what saying, it is, Mike, we were talking checking. earlier. Yeah, we were talking earlier about how I put the maps, the older versions, in a bit.ly, mm -hmm. and then um, it ended up being like 65 within one week, and then for, for one of the maps, and then another map, it was like 80-something. So it's just kind of to, when it, it's useful even in... You know, popular map, or the most, you know, uh, quick map. I'm so interested in gathering that data. Um, if your document, your package document, were put into something like a bit.ly or a query code, um, does the town make those? You know what a QR code is? Yeah, we do. They, we find that those don't get used very often. Sure. Um, the QR codes. <laughs> it's the um, demographic. Okay. Right. So, but a Bitly would because a Bitly is a short. Um, it's a short website address um, that you can track. So it's just up to you all. I'm more concerned about you all doing a slide because I think that that would enable you to get the word out to uh, get some input. And then. So I'd be glad to help with that if Tracy, you want to help me. Okay. So Thank I, you. Tracy, I just had a few like housekeeping items related to the meeting. One was we talked about when the maps, the large maps, are printed, like having some kind of public comment form or something that like somebody, of somebody, somebody physically could submit. Do is that something? There's something the town. I mean, as, as you said, it could even almost be like a pad of paper or something. Is there something we want to have like a little, I don't know, I could make like a little half sheet of paper or something where people could comment if there's not something the town already has for that. No, do you have anything like that? Not really, but I mean, it's something simple, like you said, yeah. and, and we can, it's the maps are on the wall and there's a table right under them, so it can just sit right on the table. Yeah, I mean, we could have a little stack and people could drop it off to you or a little mm -hmm. basket or something that would be great and then of course like we could just scan those in and have those like in the e-record for the for so sue do you all have those big sticky pads like you have during meetings you know like a big post-it note have you seen those no. they're used for meetings like big and you write on them big they're they're like a a, a non-standard post-it note it's made for you know a, a they go group on meeting. easels they go on yeah easels. they go on easels what would be yeah, fun no, have, okay so uh. you know this is my community engagement talking and it's to get people engaged excited about participating in government which let's face it we need it so having something where people could have like this post-it note with some colorful markers and they could write you know their opinions about map one map two um even, yeah even i think even putting the leaving a post-it notes there so people can write a comment and leave it there and oh on there. the map is good i mean i absolutely it would be nice to have a formal form where if people yeah. wanted they could leave their contact info so we can follow up with them but but i also yeah. like the creative idea about like engaging people with the map you know if people want to comment on one part of the map or another part i mean i think the town like the library they've done that with the library project with other community planning projects you know, with redoing Groff Park and like they often have these public processes with sticky notes. Right. The, the climate action plan, they all have exactly. that process. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, um, community engagement 101. I mean, if Sue, I, I don't you, know if you we had a. E I don't know if we need an easel per se, but we could at least yeah. have like a pad of sticky notes and people could leave notes yeah. on, the, on, the, on the map if they want, I guess. I mean, the largest um, sticky notes we have are probably. Um, three by six that would be perfect yeah. that's fine yeah. yeah um so and i also had just a housekeeping a practical question from mike and for when we're creating the new map so i liked your idea a lot about having one pdf that has like different versions so it would have 
So it would have the, if I send you precincts, right, it would have like map, my map with the precincts, and then there could be up to like three different versions of the districts. I think that for any maps that we want to show, we should include the current districts. Well, except for that doesn't really apply to every nice map quite as much in terms of matching up with the current districts, but just to show people, you know, if we keep the current district configurations with these new precincts, that's one option. And then we could each show like one or two other options. Uh, Peggy, does that make sense? Do you, do you see many different possible configurations for your precincts? I actually only like one configuration oh. for mine, but I'm open. To no, I, don't, I only like one for mine, but if people, I mean, you could just show that one, I guess, too. You could show that you either keep the current configuration or you that one. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so the last item is public comment. We, I know we have two attendees and I don't know um, if they want to make any comment, raise your hand. There is one. Uh, one comment. Yes. I just have one question. Um, this was really interesting. Did did you could you did you guys um, talk about districts before precincts, or did you just start in with precincts? And then you'll decide how to combine them. Marilyn was 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 mentioning the importance of precincts. I mean districts, um, and they are they they are the most key thing. Peggy mentioned them also. Um, did you start? You didn't start with districts, though, right? No, we didn't start with districts because what um, limits us are the we have hard stops on the precincts. Uh, there is by the state, we have certain limitations that we have to fulfill. So we started with the prisons, but at the same time, um, that's why one of the maps mine was discarded at some point was uh, to stay as close as possible to current precincts and the implications that would have for districts. Am I right? Yeah, I well, mean, I think we did a little bit of both would be my yes. take on it. It's like, it's hard to think about precincts without thinking about districts. So, so we kind of came at it with both there, directions. I'm sorry. Are there any maps that show your um, potential districts? Well, that's what we're working on for this time. So the map yeah. that um, Peggy had made public has a one version of um, districts with her precincts. And, and I will, I just want to echo what Tracy said that I think we really did try to come from it, come to it from both sides, but because we are legally um, constrained by what the precincts have to look like, in some ways that had to take precedence first. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, the limit is that each precinct can be no greater than 4,000 people. Um, and Regardless of the number, regardless of the number of voters, you can't go over it all. And because our population came in at thirty nine thousand two hundred and sixty three. Right. So if you divide that by 10, you're at three thousand nine hundred and twenty six. So you're pretty close to the four thousand. And so we we have spent more time tweaking the precincts and tweaking the districts. OK. Thank you. Okay. So, Tracy? I move to adjourn. And second. I, second. <laughs> I hope we can figure out how to, I don't know, I'm not sure how to be more efficient. But yeah. I hope our, all of our meetings don't keep going so long. So, yeah. I agree. There's, a few, there's only a couple more that we have to do it. Um, Marlene, last name? We need to yes. vote. Yes, A, I. Joseph Gordon? I. Tracy Safian? I. Craig Meadows? Aye. Peggy Shannon? Aye. Mehe Gilani? Aye. Irene Hamnea? Meeting adjourned. We'll see everyone next. Good night. Tuesday, is it? Tuesday, right? Next Tuesday. Tuesday at six? Six. Okay. Uh, wait a second. I uh, have to check. Um, I'm yeah. I'm sure it's six. Yes. Okay. okay.
Good night. Thank you. Good night. night.